What's up guys, Shane here for Fugitec 3D Printing, and today I'm going to show you how to do some awesome multi-extrusion prints using Simplify 3D and only one nozzle. So welcome back guys. So this will be a kind of tutorial with using Simplify 3D. A lot of my other videos before were like setting up Simplify 3D and understanding different settings. Now we're going to just go ahead and dive right in and actually use the multi-process uh, system that is in Simplify 3D in order to create a bunch of processes to make really awesome multicolored filament prints. Now you can do this on literally any 3D printer out there as long as it has one nozzle. And last time I checked, every 3D printer has at least one nozzle. So this applies to you. And you also obviously need to own Simplify 3D. Now there is a discount for students and teachers that you can get, I believe it's 15% off. I'll put the link in the video description if you want to pick that up. I personally think Simplify 3D is one of the greatest programs out there for slicing. I'm getting more used to Cura as it comes up. It is a great free program, but if you really want to harness the things that you're doing with 3D printing or if you're 3D printing for money uh, in order to optimize a lot of things, I feel that Simplify 3D is just better in that regard. Now that's just my opinion. There's a lot of pros and cons to either or. My Simplify 3D versus Cura, it was older versions that I did a few months ago. That was a big hit. I mean, that has thousands of views on it and lots and lots of comments. So, I mean, it's getting great commentary out there, but again, that's a different discussion and you can do this in Cura it is much much harder and more intense to do it is very simple to do in simplify 3d so we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that all right so uh the whole reason why i did this to begin with is that i have a whole bunch of spools that are partial uh come some of these are a little bit fuller than others but i literally have a pile of partial spools sitting there and i was sitting around like what can i 3d print like what colors do i have what can i make so went on to Thingiverse, started finding things, and I found this Paw Patrol badge. This is great. My kids are obsessed with Paw Patrol, and they have been ever since it came out. It is a huge part of my daily life with my children, so this I thought would be super fun to make for them. And for this, we need dark blue, gray, red, yellow, light blue, and white. And thankfully, the model that I'm using actually tells you all the different layer changes you need to make and where you need to make your layer changes at. So that helps out quite a bit. Then I've always wanted to print this Bioshock logo in another color filament. And I'm currently reviewing a copper colored PLA. I was like, ooh, that would be great for this. So I'm just using a plain old Excelivan black PLA along with a copper PLA in order to make this. And I'm gonna show you how to actually adjust your layers and how to find where you wanna do your transition at with Simplify 3D 4.0. So let's dive into the slicer. All right, so we're here on the computer and the first thing we need to do is actually download our model. So first we're gonna start out with the Bioshock logo simply because this will be very easy and it's only two parts. So we're gonna have two parts to come out with and then next we'll do the Paw Patrol logo which is a lot of different parts and we'll go through how to do that. So you're gonna to wanna to download this and we'll open it up. We're gonna drag it into Simplify 3D. I'm going to say yes for this and we're gonna do Control L, put it on the bottom rotate it 180 so we're looking at it and we're in there all right so here is our bioshock logo as you see it's a little hard to see but just uh if you turn around you can see the city down here all right so what do we need to do in order to split this into two things well there's a few different ways but using uh, simplify 3d 4.0 you can go to tools variable settings wizard and we have this nice little slice going through the model and we can see if we zoom in here, it is already up on the letters and we don't need it to go that high. So here it's set, set split height at 4.19. I don't know why. And I don't like how when you move this, it moves an entire millimeter. I wish it moved like a 10th, but it doesn't. So, so we're going at 3.19. Clearly that is not high enough. So we're going to go to 3.2, still not 0.4. There it is. Now, the reason why I'm doing this in the 0.2 because that is the layer height that I'm using. So you always need to make sure that you're going at 0.2 millimeters on your layer height when you're dealing with this. So we can see that is just right there at the bottom. That's not too bad. But if we did do 3.3, okay, so I did change up the model just a little bit. I scaled it to 2000%. Uh, the scaling on this uh, default model that was uploaded is not great. So you have to scale it around. I just scaled it to 2000%. This is on a standard Persa 200 by 200. And right here you can see the slice is just at the bottom of each of the letters. So that is perfect. That's exactly what we want right there. 
So we're going to hit add location and hit split process. And down here on your left, if you see, we now have two processes, 1-1 one one and 1-2. One if we look at one, we do prepare to print, hit OK. It's only the bottom, so it's only flatness. And then if we go to process two, prepare to print, hit OK. As you see, this inside area is totally gone. And it's only printing the letters, the city, and the upper border, which is exactly what we want. So if you scale this model to 2,000%, split it at 2.6, you're gonna be right here. So now let's go into the process and do some changes and figure out exactly what we need to do. Nothing on your extruder is gonna change, that's all the same. Your layer is what's gonna change. Now for the first one, your top and bottom are gonna be standard. I usually use four, and then we're actually only doing two perimeters for this one. I do usually do four top, four bottom, and that is just a personal preference of mine. With a high enough infill, that is fine. You'll do more if you're doing a lower infill, less if you're doing a higher dense infill. Again, it's completely up to you. So this is all just gonna stay exactly the same for this. In additions, this is fine as well. We're gonna do a skirt that helps prime our nozzle a little bit, make sure that we're ready and, uh, to print and not having any under extrusion on our first layer. That's good as well. For infill, we're gonna chalk this up to 25%. Simply because I wanna make sure I have a nice even layer. Like I want this bottom part right here to be nice and flat. I don't wanna see my infill in there. Even though I'm using four top and bottom layers, I would like a little bit higher of an infill. You could probably go down to 20, it just depends, but it's kind of hard when you start getting to the letters and whatnot. But either way, I'm doing 25% for the purpose of this. And I'm gonna do fast honeycomb because I like it. Uh, we don't need any support in this. And our temperature is PLA, so 60. And we're doing, uh, ooh, just gonna be uh, 200 for this one here. Cooling, that's gonna be on and our scripts. Now this is the main thing that we're gonna to have to change on our prints here. So the starting script, whatever it is for your printer, that is perfectly fine, leave that the way it is. The ending script is what we actually need to delete. Okay, and now that we've deleted everything from the ending script, we have to add something in, because if we leave it just like this, the head is just gonna sit right on top of your print and it's just gonna melt it. We really don't want that. So we're just doing G1, which is move, we're calling for X zero, caps I'll do, and then Y zero. Now this will ensure that you're, basically you're gonna home X and Y, and that will get that head away from your print from your print and not heat it up. And that will also give you somewhere where you can go ahead and purge the old filament and prime the new filament. Speed, doesn't matter what you set yours to, and if you look at advanced, when we did the tools and variable wizard, this is what it was actually changing right here, the layer modifications. It was making this so that your stopping height was 2.6. It starts at zero, so you don't need to change that, but it stops here. And we're gonna hit okay, go into process two, we're gonna zip right to advanced real quick, and here you see it starts at 2.6. So if you know the actual height of the model you're printing, like if you scaled it yourself and you know what it's supposed to be, you can go ahead and do this yourself, but that variable print wizard just helps out a lot with doing that. Uh, back to the beginning here, extruder stays the same. Layer, this is what we're gonna change. We're changing the bottom to zero because the letters in the city are printing directly onto a solid layer. So we don't need any bottom layers because you're not gonna see any of it. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. We're doing two perimeters like we were in the last one. Additions, the skirt brim, turn this off. Otherwise it's gonna to try to print it around midair. You don't want that to happen. So we're just gonna leave that alone. Infill again, make sure this matches what your process one was. Since I changed it, you know, gotta change that. Again, no support. Temperatures can all stay the same. Again, I did 200 for this. Cooling should be on. And our scripts. So our starting script, depending on what your starting script is, you can generally leave it. I mean, again, it's, this is kind of where it gets a little bit tricky, but I leave mine on because what it does is it extrudes a bunch of filament down in the one corner. It will extrude it and then it will raise up to 2.6 millimeters and then start printing this. If you have something that's more complicated or you don't have one, make sure you properly prime your extruder before it starts to print this because if it under extrudes, you're going to notice. So you have to make sure that that nozzle is primed and ready to print and there's no oozing on it using something like a more sophisticated startup script will help out with that. So again, with mine, I can go ahead and leave this here. Ending script, again, this is something that you want to leave on this time. This is our last process. We're only doing a two process print 
This is our last one. So when this print ends, we want it to shut off everything and all the safety features that we override or we don't turn off. We're turning off the extruder, the bed, the fans, all that stuff's turning off and it, we are finishing that up. Speeds, some people will turn this down more uh, because you technically don't have a first layer when you're printing at this height. So it's not gonna slow down like it would doing your first layer on the build plate. So if you wanna turn this down to like 40 or I mean, again, whatever your printer is, you need to decide on what that should be. I can't say that for every printer out there, so you just have to know that. And again, we just to show you here, it does that. So now once we're done, we can hit process one, prepare to print, and we're only printing process one, and hit okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and save this off, and you can call it whatever your model is, part one. Great, now that's done. Exit that, go into process two, prepare to print, only process two here, hit okay. There it is, see? So we don't have any additions on the outside, we just have straight printing, and if we go all the way down to layer one, you can see it starts straight with infill because we don't need any solid layer lines there. Again, these ones are solid because there's only like three layers there. So, but anyways, it starts with infill. That's exactly what we want. So we can go ahead and save that and call that part two. Now, all we have to do is get it to print. Okay, so process one is going, it's printing, it has finished, your bed has homed on the X and Y, Z stays the same. Now you're gonna go ahead and remove your filament and put in your second color. And for me, it's going to be that bronze color and it's only going to print the letters and the city and the outline here of the print. So once I have that started, my printer is gonna go through its startup script, which you see here is my zigzag. And once it does that zigzag, it will then go up to 2.6 and then start on the second layer, which is exactly what we want. Then once the print has finished, the print bed will home and do all of the standard uh, off uh, functions that you call for in your ending strip, which would be turn off the motors, home the printer, turn off the fan, turn off the heated bed, turn off your extruder, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna try a more difficult model. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this Paw Patrol model. You can use anything you want, but this one is just a really good one for using six colors of filament. So in my opinion, this is a great model to try out. And if you have kids, even better because honestly, what kid doesn't like Paw Patrol? I honestly don't mind watching it. So this one, I'm doing a Milan Ply Select Mini. Now, when I imported the model, it's actually, this isn't to scale here. So here's to scale. It's obviously too big. Well, the author actually gives you all of the different sizes that you actually need. So where to do your layer changes, he walks you through all of that. Pull it up right here for you. So here it is right here, he tells you, zero to one, dark blue, then silver, red, yellow, light blue, and white. And he tells you where to make all those changes, which makes doing our variable wizard so much easier. So we're gonna minimize that. And so, okay, what I was saying here, back to here. So because he tells you, if I scale this down, so uniform, if I scale this down to 71%, it's no longer as thick as it should be on the X and Y, or I should say on the Z, it's much smaller. So what I had to do is just make everything, make the Z 100%, and then now it is thick enough and I can still use the wizard the way I should. So we're gonna go down tools and variable settings wizard and you can see it goes all the way up to six millimeters. So the first split we're gonna do is at one millimeter. Turn cap, there we go, one. And then just keep adding each location in. Three, four, and five, and hit split. Okay, so there's our six processes right there for our six colors. And you can go ahead and preview each one. So if you go to one, just like that one, you can see it's just flat, two, and you can see how it is off the build plate. You should make your first process the way you want it. And then we're gonna go through and you need to edit each one. So as I said, extruder, nothing changes. Layer for the first process stays the same. Second one, we're doing no bottom layers, only top layers. Additions, turn off skirt brim. I'm doing 30% infill per the recommendations of the author of this. As you see right here, he says infill of 30% at 0.2. So we're gonna go with his recommendations on this. I'm doing fast honeycomb, there's no support. Temperatures are already set. Cooling is good to go. And scripts, okay. So I also wanna leave my starting script on these because this is going to prime my nozzle and then it will start the print, which is great. The ending script 
I only need to do G1, X0, Y0. Like that. And in the starting strip, it homes. So all you need to do, this is just to get the nozzle off your printer, off your print, I should say. You don't want it to melt that kind of stuff. So get that out of the way. And then advanced, you can see it tells us start at one and at two. That is good to go. So we're gonna go through each one real quick and update those and then we'll take a look what it looks like afterwards. Okay, now once all those are done, again, you can look through and preview each one, what it looks like. You see like the white only does that. So what I did is when I exported this, when I created each process, I named it the color. So I just did Paw Patrol 1 and then the color. That was just reminding me on what I actually need to do. So the first one I called Paw Patrol 1, dark blue. Paw Patrol 2, gray. Paw Patrol 3, red, et cetera, et cetera, going down to each one. So again, this is the exact same process for the two-part one, just a lot more processes. So each one you go through, it's going to finish. Then it's going to come over here and home the X and Y. Swap out your filament. You hit print again, and it's going to go ahead and prime along here. Again, this is how mine it goes. Then it will raise up, and then it will go over and start the print and do it all its thing. And then it will stop. It will home this X and Y again, and everything will stay on. The heat of bed stays on. The extruder stays on. That's really crucial to know. And then on your last print, it's crucial to make sure you put all those safeties back in. You don't want to have a hot end on for hours and hours if you're going to bed after this or anything like that. You don't want to leave a 3D printer unattended with a hot end and heat to bed on. And it's not actually doing anything. It's just not good. So it's as simple as that, guys. I mean, it really is not that hard. Again, I've showed you a two process and here is a six process multi-print and this will work for you. I want to say guaranteed, but I don't want to say that just because I want to yell at me. But I mean, it worked for me on several prints that I've done aside from my own setting mistakes but take what I've learned and how I'm doing it and I think it will work out really well for you. So yeah, so I hope this helps you guys understand how to do multi-process printing in Simplify 3D, different files for each one of these processes. That's how you get these multi-colored prints out of one extruder using Simplify 3D. Here for this one, I suggest a cheap Accelivan, uh, black PLA, and this was a copper PLA that I'm reviewing from Banggood. This was a total mix. So I think this has Gizmo Dorks, Inland, Folger Tech, Catalyst. Um, I think I have some Ziltech in here. And I'm not sure what else. I'm using tons of different kinds of filament. So if you're using, or say just say different brands of filament, all PLA though, you can just set your different extruder temps for each one, however it is that you normally print with that color. If white ends up being hard for you, or if you have black, if black needs a little bit more heat for you, that's fine. You can set each of those up for each individual process. 205, generally 200, 205 works for me for most almost any color filament, unless it's like Maker Geeks and they just need a lot higher temperature. So it's very easy. So I really hope this helps you out, guys. I hope this helps you understand Simplify 3 just a little bit better. And if it did, please give me a thumbs up. If it didn't, give me a thumbs down. Talk to me in the comments. Let me know what I can do to make these videos better. I want to make these as educational as possible for how I found out how to do things. I'm trying to share what I find with you. And again, I just hope it helps out. So thank you. Uh, if you want to support me, obviously subscribe for more of these videos. I'll try to do these as often as possible. Uh, it just, however I, it's like, oh, that'd be a fun thing to do. Or if you have any suggestions for other Simplify 3D videos, please leave it in the comments. I would love to try and make them for you. If you want to support me financially, donate me via Patreon. Donate me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, those donations go into actually buying the filament that I use for a lot of my videos. Not everything I get is free. I have to pay money for a lot of filaments in order to make these videos. So that goes to helping me buy filament. If you want to support me without spending money, affiliate links. That's a great way to do your daily shopping. Update your bookmarks with those and a little slice of what you buy comes back here to help me. Again, that helps me buy equipment. I just had to buy a brand new lens for this camera. So that pretty much wiped out everything I got from a lot of those sources very quickly. Uh, so if you use those, you get to help out the creators like myself. So thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And as always, happy printing.